how to play a simple life. To play a simple life first is you have to determine your goal. To determine your goal, you have to roll a d6. When you roll a d6, check the goal list, whatever the value of the dice that you roll is your goal. For example, in this one, 4, that means my goal is to catch the legendary fish in the lake. Now, after you determine your goal, you're now ready to play the game. Well, each round in the simple life is also known as days, and each day is divided into three phases, start of day, the day itself, and the end of day. Now, at the start of day, you just roll your five dice, put it to the left, set aside to the left of the sheet. The left of the sheet is your available dice, the right is the used dice. So this is just to keep track of the available and the used dice. Now that you have rolled your dice, you will move on to the day phase. During the day phase, you will use your dice to activate the locations on the sheet. Now each location has different costs and different effects as well. Now we have four locations on the sheet that gives you actions and has a benefit while two of them are mainly trackers like the pond and the museum the pond tracks all of the fish the museum tracks all of the artifacts to activate a location you just have to pay the dice cost so for example the farm has one dice cost one die cost the mines has two die cost that means i have to pay two dice to activate the mines the value of the dice is important to some of the locations but we will talk about that later for now that's how you activate die. For example, I activate the farm. I will perform the farm's action and place the die in the use dice area because that's already used. So that's how you activate. Now, during the day, when you complete a goal, you just check that goal and move on. If you complete all of your goals and it's not yet the end of the game, you can continue playing. Uh, that means you can score more. If at the end of the game you did not complete all of your goals, you will not be able to score. But nothing is stopping you from scoring and comparing your score to the score chart in the rule book. It's up to you. Alright, when you run out of dice or when you decide to pass, when you pass, for example, I have one die and I decide to pass, I will just put that die in the use dice area. Okay, so if all of my dice are in the use dice area, that is the end of the day. And at the end of the day, if it is the 10th day, the game ends otherwise you just start a new day okay so let's say it's the 10th day the game ends um, at the end of the game check if you have completed all of your goals if you do congratulations you may count your score so how do you score in the game you score based on the icons in your inventory it's also showing here in the scoring area of the paper so it shows here you gain five points for each heart that has a circle or you have, yeah, yeah, that you have gained in your inventory. Uh, five points for each diamond that you've gained. Three points for each tool that you have fully upgraded. Two points for each coin. Two points for each monster that you have defeated. And negative two points for each monster that you have not defeated or that has, an, that has a cross on it. Monsters without a cross does not lose you points. And one point for each carrot in your inventory. Then you gain points for museum and the pond as well, and you total your score here. The scoring for the museum is different. This is based on how many artifacts you have collected. So if you have collected four, you gain 25 points. Now for the pond, you just sum up all of the point value of the fish that has a check. So if you, have, if you caught the legendary fish, you gain 10 points. And you caught the crab, you gain plus two points. So the tot that's a total of 12 points. You write the point here. And then you add them all together, you put the total. So that's how you score in a simple life. Now that you know how to play the game, that's the basic. Let's talk about the location because this is the main game. So we have locations here. We have farm, we have town, we have mines, we have lake. These are the main locations that will be activated throughout the game. So the farm is the main source of carrot and flower. When you activate the farm, you use a die, right? So whatever the value of the die that you use, that is the column that you can choose. So if I use five, I can choose this column that has a carrot or this column that has a flower. After choosing a column, I will just add a check to the bottom most checkbox of that column. So for this five, I will add a check to the flower or here to the carrot. Okay. Now, if I 
have a check mark on on the topmost checkbox of that column i immediately gain that icon and that is called a harvest whenever you gain you circle it in your inventory whenever you lose you cross it out in your inventory so that is the farm you may use that again there is no limit to how many times you can activate a location next is the lake in order to activate the lake use a die right now the value of the die that you use determines which column you can choose so here in the lake you have three columns right so one two if you use one two you can choose from here if you use three four you can choose from here if you use five six you can choose from here right so after using that after determining which column you you can choose from the next step is to choose a target now a target is a cell let's say i chose the shrimp i will place my die on that shrimp to mark that that is my target now the next step is to reroll that die and compare the value to the first column here uh, same same row of the target so on my target the shrimp i need to roll three plus if i roll three or higher i successfully catch that shrimp if i roll lower than that i fail to catch the shrimp let's talk about failing and succeeding if you succeed in catching the shrimp you just draw a check on that shrimp and you will check the pond as well to keep track of your score now let's say i failed to catch this shrimp what will happen here when i fail i will circle that to mark that i failed that once now if i catch that again if i try to catch that again and fail instead of circling it i will cross it that means i cannot fish that target anymore so you have two chances to catch the fish so make use of your carrots anytime during the game you can lose a carrot one carrot to reroll any number of available dice or the dice that you just rolled so for example i rolled four catching that legendary fish i can use a carrot i have one carrot i can use that carrot to reroll the result and have a better chance of catching that but if i fail and no more carrot that's it you cannot catch the legendary fish and if that is your mission that's game over so that is how you play the lake and that is how you use a carrot to reroll when choosing a target in the lake you cannot choose a target with a check and with an x but you can choose a target that has a circle on it and a target that has no markings whatsoever right so that is the lake finish let's talk about the mines the mines has a cost of two two dice so whenever you want to activate the mines you have to pay two dice now the next step is to roll those dice roll those two dice and choose which one is the row and which one is the column so if i can choose this one as the row and five as the column or i can use the one as the column and five as the row now next step is to determine where the column and the row meets so for for this example they meet here in this spot that is showing a monster and a coin you will cross that cell after crossing that cell you will gain any uh, of the icons inside it except if it's a monster so for the coin i just immediately gain that now for the monster i have to fight it now this is the rule for fighting a monster whenever you fight a monster you have to roll one of the dice that you just used so i'm gonna roll the Let's say I roll five or more. If I roll five or more, I defeat that monster and I circle it in my inventory. However, if I roll less than five, let's say three, that monster defeats me or damages me or gets away. And instead of circling it, I have to cross it. Now, at the end of the game, each monster with a cross is negative two points. So it's dangerous to go to the mine. You might lose some uh, valuable points there. Of course, if you land on a space that has an X on it already, you cannot gain that anymore. So you might as well just want to flip that and instead get this. So that's how you do the mine. How do you do the town? Let's talk about the town. Town is quite different. The die that you use to activate the town is the number of actions you can perform in the town. You have to place it here. So if I use five, that means I can perform five actions in the town. Now there are three sub-locations in the town. We have shop, town square, and blacksmith. Each action in the town square or blacksmith or shop costs one action each. Every time you use an action, you have to adjust this die to keep track of it. So five becomes four, four becomes three. Okay, so what can you do in the shop? In the shop, you can buy or sell 
resources. To buy, you lose coin to gain a carrot. If you lose coin to gain a flower, you lose coin to gain a stone. Whenever you lose, you cross it out. And whenever you gain, you circle it out. You circle it, right? So that's how you buy. Now, let's say I'm selling a carrot. If I sell a carrot, I just cross it and gain a coin. Now, I can also do uh, sell two flower for one coin, two stone for one coin. And this will re be reduced. So that's the shop. Next is the town square. In the town square, you can befriend or make friends with the villagers. There are four villagers or five villagers. Three of them are individual and the last one is a couple, an elderly couple. Each villager will show flower here. That's what you need to give them or that's what you need to lose in order to add a check to one of their check boxes. So all of them accepts flower as a gift. So that's the main purpose of the flower. Now, as you can see, this only requires one flower to have a check, but the elderly couple, you need to lose two flower to have a check. Now you will lose action for each give action that you perform. For example, I, I gave them two flower, that is considered just one action because that is a give. Now, whenever I give a give, I have to check this one, right? So if, for example, I already check Two of them and I give this girl a flower I will have a check on the third check box that is showing a heart and when it is showing a heart you immediately gain a heart you circle it here and as well as a gift from them she is giving you a carrot so to mark that you cross that carrot and you circle it here in your inventory right so that's how you make friends lastly Blacksmith. Blacksmith upgrades your tools. What are the tools? Tools are these icons, these four icons here, and they also appear in the locations that they are related to. So for the farm, it's a watering can. All right. So for the blacksmith to upgrade or to have a check on this checkbox, you have to lose two stones. I can add a check to one of the tools. So if I choose the watering can, I have to check the first column first before I can fully upgrade it to the second column. Now, each column will give you, the, uh, give you an upgraded effect of the action. So, let's talk about them. Watering can allows you to add one more check to a column that you choose in the farm. Uh, its fully upgraded effect is to, it allows you to add two checks. So, here in the farm, normally, whenever you water, or whenever you activate the farm, you can add one check, right? Now, if you have an upgrade of the watering can, you can add one more check to that column. Now, if you have the level 2 upgrade, you can add three checks in one column in one action. And that's how tools affect locations that they are related to. So, that is just the watering can. Next, we have a pickaxe. It uh, allows you to control the dice result in the mine because it allows you to add one or minus or subtract one to one of the dice. The level two is you can modify two of the dice that you rolled in the mine. Next, for the fishing rod, it modifies the lake. Uh, whenever you roll the dice, you add plus one to the result. That means it's easier to catch fish. Lastly, the sword. Instead of having to roll five plus for the monster, you now roll four plus only. The second level is you only roll, you only have to roll three plus to defeat the monster. And that is it. Town, the farm, the mines, and the lake. And that's basically it. That's how you play a simple life.